Hey guys, Kim Sylvia with the week that was in the XJW YouTube community. This week was supposed to be a totally fun video about in real life activism and dead set funny videos from the XJW community YouTube um, section. Um, obviously, I've got the sheets and I want to talk about Mr. Lloyd Evans yet again. So if you're here watching my videos, thank you so much for joining and please feel free to stop watching as soon as we change topics which will be after the conclusion of all the funny videos and in real life activism. Um, I don't want you to feel like you have to um, watch my videos about Lloyd. Please feel free to stop. And also feel free not to leave a comment because I don't read them. So just saying. I was gonna go on camera today, however, I did go for a facial this week and hell went to hell in a hay cart and now this is what I look like. So you're stuck with my little friend, the elephant. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I have loved it. There's some dead set funny stuff that's gone out in the community this week. And I really just wanna focus on the positive because I think that's uh, what we as a community really miss doing. Um, there's so much negative shit that happened to us but this is a positive that I was hoping to be able to highlight. A little bit of housekeeping before we get going today. What I've done is I've done things a little bit differently. I'm including a few little brief clips of the videos that I'm highlighting this week and the channels that I'm highlighting. So you can have a preview um, and see what I see about the way these videos are delivered. I think that there's a lot of information about the Jehovah's Witness organization that we can look at, but it's also done in a way that I don't find triggering included links to each of the videos in the description below so that you can very easily access any of those or all of those videos. So this is Wally from JW Thoughts. Um, he has a great video this week. I just wanted to throw this out there because it is a old skit that I did and it got like 1500 views so most of you guys haven't seen it and if you have seen it it's really funny so check it out again. Anyway with all of that being said here's a quick little five minute video. I hope it gives you a bit of a chuckle and a laugh and for the new subscribers and those of you who don't know that I've done a lot of little weird skits and stuff uh, you can kind of see where where the dark regions of my mind sort of exist. Anyway, don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So the next clip is from Ben Ford. Um, he's a couple of really good videos. He did a um, Reddit um, Ask Me Anything, which I thought was fantastic. Um, watched right to the end because he has a, an answer in respect of his dating, which is absolutely fantastic. I love Ben Ford. I love his positivity. I love how he will share history from his time as a Bethelite, but he also talks about moving forward and getting on with his life. I think it's perfect. He has a fresh start and I love his positivity. But before we do, let's just recap the key points. My name's Ben. I was raised in a religious cult, otherwise known as Jehovah's Witnesses. I moved to Bethel when I was 21, was an elder by 24, worked in the audio video services making cult propaganda. All this to say I was basically a priest stuck inside a cult compound. And so without further ado, let's have a look at your questions. is from Bridget from AZ uh, in relation to a telephone call that she makes to a kingdom hall to speak with an elder about the new light that has been recently unraveled at the recent convention. Real life activism right there. Love it. It's respectful and very effective. Oh, hi. Um, my name is Christine. Um, I just have a quick question. I've been um, watching some of the convention videos. Yeah, yeah. Video from Goat Like Personality. Did you know the Watchtower itself is a pagan symbol? I love Goat Like Personality's videos. I think that he does a great job and I always highly recommend watching them. He's got light humor. He's very, very interesting and very, very knowledgeable. So Jexit's done a video this week, Jexit 2020. I highly recommend this video. It's so positive about changing attitudes and his jacket list. Couldn't recommend it enough. Thanks again for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, my name is Riley and I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. Today I have another jacket list update for you. If you're new here, you're probably asking, what is a jacket list? Well, my jacket list is my Jexit bucket list. And it's basically a list of things that I want to experience or achieve 
that are prohibited in my former religion. So just a quick note also that Jexit has done a video with Jill Owen in relation to the podcast called Bethel. Fantastic interview. It sort of explains how the podcast came to be, which is another really great example of real life, act of real life activism. I've done a video on it previously from one email to calling Bethel. Highly recommend that you check that out if you're interested in looking at some real life activism efforts. Surviving Paradise have done a video called Jehovah's Witness Hypocrisy a la carte, Dodging Gluttons and Birthday Cake. I found this particularly interesting. I have um, some experience in my past where this exact sort of um, problem kept occurring in our congregation. Um, very, very interesting. I love the way this person speaks. Check it out. And I really want to take a minute to, uh, once again to say what a week for Jehovah's Witnesses at the time of this recording. The Pursue Peace District Conventions are landing all over the planet. And there is, as, as usual, there is no lack of of mind-blowing material coming out of the district convention, particularly since they've changed so much for from the time when I was a kid and I was actually speaking and involved at district conventions. So this is another, another little video by So Colty called There's No Crying in Church. I love these videos. They tell stories um, about things that happened and their experiences while well. they make a piece of clothing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. A gift for a new friend of mine that I met at the Atheist convention. Soft, comfy, but cute is the goal, and I hope I succeeded. Do not judge me. Today I thought I would tell you a story about when one of my best friends moved away, and when we cried about it at the Kingdom Hall, we got yelled at by a sister. Mm-hmm. This next video is by ex Jehovah's Witness Yes Man. Um, he basically goes out and speaks to one of the elders, presumably, or the brother and sister that are at a cart in relation to the latest um, convention material about babies uh, being enemies of God. Again, another real life activism effort. I think it's very respectfully done. Great option and great idea if someone's looking to undertake some sort of activism in real life. Question for you. I, I don't know the Bible too well, but I do know that Jesus said when he was looking at the children, come to me. He, he wanted the children to come to him. And then I believe it's in Saul where God said that he noticed the embryo. He was talking about yeah. King David. Right. Well, I was at a convention. Man who doesn't know anything about the Bible, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> This week, the Blue Envelope has put out some highlight videos from the 2022 convention um, in morning afternoon sessions. I find them extremely interesting, very good highlights, and it's only six minutes or six and a half minutes long. So by all means, go ahead, check it out. The link is in the description below. Oh, hello there. Phil here from the Blue Envelope channel. Well, another week, another batch of convention videos have been released. And so this is my favorite clips from the Friday afternoon sessions. Without further ado, as David Splane says, let's watch. Why is it that a lot of Kingdom Halls don't have windows? What is it with that, you know? It's what you're trying to hide by not having windows there. I noticed a lot of Freemasonic lodges also don't have windows. You know, they do those rituals and shit, you know? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Hmm. See you all day and just ponder why well, they don't have windows in their kingdom halls. So, this is Yahweh to Hell's latest video. I think it was taken a few years ago. Um, however, it's still very funny. He talks about windowless kingdoms. My question to him is why do you sound like you are English when you actually are Australian? But nonetheless, great video. Well done, Yahweh to Hell. Loved it. And so my final video for the Round the Grounds today is by Nick's Story. I've covered Nick's Story before, but I just love their channel. This week's video that I highlighted is Jehovah's Witness Pursue Peace Convention Circle of Life Bible XJW. Check it out. I'm actually going to play the video probably in its entirety because I just love it. You guys need to see what they do. It's funny. They've got heaps of videos. Please do yourself a favor. It's the closest thing to Kevin McFree that I've um, seen, so please check it out. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 
Pursue Peace Convention. The scripture theme for this session and the next is Psalm 29, 11. Jehovah will bless his people with peace. Notice the peace we find by observing Jehovah's creations, reading his word, and sharing his message with others. It's the What's up? Good morning. Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? Because if you're not, I have a pair for you that... So we're up to that section of video where we don't... Uh, if you don't want to hear what I've got to say about Lloyd, please switch off now. And thank you so much for watching Weekly Roundup. Um, I want to talk about something. Um, a couple of days ago I posted on Twitter and said that, you know, I'm going on holidays, I'm actually going to the United Kingdom, my favourite place on the planet, I'm looking forward to it, I'm going for six weeks at the end of this month, and uh, I just don't want to be dealing with Lloyd's bullshit anymore while I am on my holiday. So, um, you know, I, I posted on it and said, you know, exactly that on Twitter, and a couple of people were like, oh, have you 15 minutes of fame, and a couple of people were, um, you know, why do you keep talking about it, and I'm like, well, because Lloyd keeps talking about it and Lloyd keeps doing something about it. So I'm going to keep talking about it. Anyway, I then saw today that uh, Leah Remini and Mike Rinder have put out a podcast which um, features Lloyd in there talking about CSA activism and his involvement with Vixer, etc, etc. And I just want to say that it would appear that the podcast was recorded 2021 period of time. Um, so I definitely think it is pretty all of what we call the scandal. Um, however, it was only posted on to YouTube within the last 24 hours. So I can only assume that either Mike Winder and Leah Remini are not aware um, of the issues relating to Lloyd's involvement or continued involvement with CSA, um, given what we know as a fact, um, or they're ignorant or they don't have a problem with it. Um, I personally do have a problem with it. I think that it's wrong. Um, I've said it from day one. I'm just continuing to say it and I'll continue to say it. Um, it is my opinion that Lloyd should not have anything to do with CSA victims. I certainly don't think he should be the advocate. Quite a number of people who are CSA victims have said I don't want him to speak on my behalf. I think it's more important that the needs of the victims and the positions of the victims and the opinions of the victims um, that are within our community are listened to before uh, Lloyd's opinion because they're the ones that everybody acts on behalf of and they're the ones that we all speak in support of um, and I find it very difficult that we're not listening to the CSA victims in respect of their opinions and their position in respect of the situation with Lloyd. So I can only encourage people if you are a CSA victim use your voice, you speak out, make it known that you don't want Lloyd to speak on your behalf if it, that is in fact how you feel. If you feel that it's okay for him to speak on your behalf then by all means express that opinion also. Um, I just find it really really difficult to sit back and, and accept that, that, you know, that this is okay for him to be presented as a CSA advocate on behalf of the XJW community. Um, one thing that also came to my mind on Twitter this just today was somebody has found the video that I have referred to previously about the gentleman who referred to Lloyd um, as running a monopoly um, or accusing him of running a monopoly or creating a monopoly. Um, I found out his name is Tony and I actually found this video and I've taken some clips out of it um, because I think it expresses 100% how I feel and why I will continue to speak out against um, Lloyd's involvement with the XJW community and CSA advocacy. I, I think that it's important to look at intention. Why does somebody do what they do? Why does somebody behave the way they do? Has that person's behaviour changed? And if it hasn't changed, can we expect that it will change in the future? I think it's very important that we think about these things. And I've got no issue with the, the OGs of the community. I've expressed quite publicly on a number of occasions that if they had continued on speaking about the things and the behaviours that Lloyd had been displaying back 
seven, eight, nine, ten years ago and everything in between that we I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in. I am not objectionable to the to the to the OGs. The OGs know and understand where I'm coming from and I understand why they didn't do what they um, didn't do. I, I understand that they couldn't continue on, that they were talking into a void and nobody was listening to them and that they just couldn't withstand the, the abuse and, and the bullying that they experienced from the community for speaking out. Um, I don't care how much abuse or bullying or aggression I cop, I'm going to continue to speak about it until the right thing is done and until people are fully aware and that everybody can make an informed decision and they have the full facts to the matter. Um, so say as you wish, please don't leave shitty comments um, and watch the rest of the video. It, ex it explains exactly how I feel. This gentleman has absolutely nailed um, my feelings, even though he said them seven years ago. So, uh, you know, by all means, check it out. Um, and I will continue to speak out because they cannot be promoted as a CSA advocate within the XJW community, in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to continue to speak and support that position for as long as he continues to speak out as an advocate. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, I've put up on the screen the um, Lee Remini and Mike Winder podcast. Check it out if you wish. But uh, as I said, I don't think it was a recent uh, video. Uh, a podcast, I beg your pardon, I think it was from pre-September last year and it's just been put up now. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It certainly demonstrates how I feel and why I continue to speak out the way I do. And I hope you all have a wonderful week, whatever it is you're doing. And I should be very, very happy to catch up with you again shortly. See you later. God, you know what? You're really going against our cause. Well, what is that cause? And who is the one that's causing you to think that that might be ineffective? Well, I don't know. I, I can think of one person. One person that has stuck in my craw for so long that I have held my tongue back for so long. We could call him Jesus Christ, JC, John Cedars. Hello there. Yeah, this is about the point where a lot of you guys are going to click off this video. You know, made it clear that apostasy is your business. Now let me ask you this question. You said that ever since you were 15 years old, you wanted to be an elder. You're right. You know what? Fuck Facebook for saying for using the terminology friends. I ugh, friends? I'm sorry. When I was 15 years old in the religion, you were the type of person that we were making fun of. You wanted to be an elder when you were 15 years old? You wanted to sit in judgment on people? What did you want to do? Was was your goal Really to help people? No. You wanted the fucking power. You wanted the authority. You wanted to tell people what to think. Now, oh, let's see, John. Why did you get removed as an elder? Was it because you practiced the safest sex known to man, computer sex, and got busted on that? Oh, God, I think so. We all know you admitted to that. Hey, ain't holding that against you because when I got this fellowship, I fucked as many hot girls as I possibly can. You know, you were bragging months ago that you blocked 50 people on Facebook. How, what is it now, 80? Anytime somebody disagrees with you, <laughs> I have sat back and I have watched you bully people behind the scenes. Oh, sure, you know, your videos are great. That's why I was following your videos, because you do make quality videos. But what your 3,700, 3,800 fucking followers, whatever it is, they don't see what you do behind the scenes. What we speculated back then was that you were going to monetize this. You wanted to try to find the people on YouTube that had a voice and extinguish them. You wanted a monopoly on apostasy. And you know what? We saw that you were monetizing YouTube. We saw that you accepted donations on your uh, website. But it wasn't until what I saw a couple days ago where you so blatantly made it clear that apostasy is your business. John, 
You stay in your little hole of a country and you be the keyboard warrior that you are. You, you continue. You have now made it clear your full time business is apostasy. You are a beggar. You are a fucking little bum dangling a tin cup asking for donations. Well, what? While your wife has a real job? And what? You just sit at home behind the keyboard waiting for the latest gossip and apostate uh, news? And hey, post this. Here we go. Monetize on YouTube. Asking for donations. Dude, you are a fucking disgrace.